Hi everyone, it's Pastor Wagner. This is my weekly video blog. I'm continuing on with the two everythings today again, and this day, this time we're going to talk about two deaths. And this will be similar to the two perishings that I talked about a couple of weeks ago. As it is with death, so it is with the other things that we've talked about. There is a spiritual aspect, which is an eternal aspect, and there's also a temporal aspect, which is a physical aspect of death. I'm going to talk about the spiritual aspect first, the eternal aspect of death. If you remember when God created Adam, he put him in the garden, and he told him to dress and keep it, and he told him that of all the trees in the garden, he could freely eat of any of them. But there was one tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that he, shouldn't, he could not eat of, and if he did, he would die that very day. It says in, Re in Genesis 2 and verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. There's an important part in that verse, two, two important parts. In the day thou eatest thereof, so it would happen the very day that Adam ate, and he would surely die, not might or could or possibly, but he would surely die that day. And we know that Adam did eat of the fruit. We're told in Genesis 3 and verse 6. It says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Now what did God say? In the day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So if God was telling the truth, and of course he was, Adam died that day. Now we know he didn't physically die because he went on to live for another 900 and some years, but he did die that day. And you see a very, you see a change come over Adam after he ate that fruit. He was, now he was ashamed of being naked. He was hiding from God. He was blame shifting. He was talking back to God and, and so on. So there was a spiritual change that happened to him. That was a result of spiritual death. And as a result of that spiritual death, that spiritual death was passed down to all of Adam's descendants. And with that spiritual death came condemnation and judgment. We're told in Romans 5 and verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, so and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. Verse 16, And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. And verse 18, Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. When Adam ate that fruit, he died spiritually. The death principle entered into him, and he was changed. And whenever he biologically generated children, that death, that spiritual death was passed down to them. It's as if Adam's spiritual DNA was corrupted, and that corruption was passed down to every successive generation. And the proof of that, as Paul says, is, for all have sinned. You want to know that that spiritual death is passed down to all men? It's because all have sinned. We're told, David said, that he was conceived in sin. We're told that the wicked go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. The Lord said that the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth, back in Genesis chapter 8. So we see that this principle gets passed down to all men. Now this spiritual death, this death here is called death in trespasses and sins, and it requires a spiritual quickening, or that means to make alive, a resurrection, if you will, a spiritual resurrection to take a person that's dead spiritually and bring them to life spiritually. The Bible calls it a quickening, it also calls it regeneration. We read in Ephesians 2 and verse 1, And you hath he quickened, or made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins. This is that spiritual death that Adam passed down to us. Colossians 2.13, And you, being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Now those who don't experience this spiritual quickening, which is called the first resurrection, they will experience the second death, which is death in the lake of fire. Let me read you a couple of verses here out of Revelation 20. I'm going to read verse 6 and then verses 12 through 15. For more information on this, I covered the I, I exegeti exegetically went through the book of Revelation or the chapter Revelation chapter twenty. What I'm trying to say, I went through that chapter in a series I did on millennialism, and if I remember, I will put a link to that in the description of this video. But it says in Revelation twenty and verse six, "Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years." 
Here, this first resurrection is referring to what Paul's talking about, and you hath he quickened or made alive. If you take part in the first resurrection, if you are spiritually made alive and given, if you were, your spirit is regenerated and you're made born again and you're given eternal life, the second death hath no power on you. Because when God quickens you spiritually, he gives you eternal life. He forgives your sins. And if you have eternal life, Jesus said they shall never perish. The second death hath no power on them who have had the first resurrection. That is, the spiritual quickening of their inward man. Revelation 20 and verse 12, it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The second death is when, after the resurrection, when all the physical dead bodies, which we'll talk about in a minute, are resurrected from the dead, joined back with their souls and spirit, they will be judged according to their works and sent to the lake of fire. That's the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, it was cast into the lake of fire. It has been said, and I think it's a good little saying, that if you're only born once, you die twice. If you're born twice, you die once. If you're born once, that means you haven't been reborn, you haven't been born again, you haven't been regenerated. If you're only born once, physically, you're going to die physically, and you're going to die spiritually in the lake of fire forever and ever. But if you're born twice, you're born physically, and then you're born spiritually, you're born again, regenerated, you're only going to die once. You're going to die physically if Christ doesn't come back first, but you're never going to die spiritually, you're never going to die, you're never going to experience that second death in the lake of fire. The next type of death that the Bible talks about is physical death. There's actually other deaths that are spoken of in the Bible, but I'm not covering them today and I don't have time. But there is a death to fellowship with God and God's people. There's also a death to sin as we put to, put to death our sinful affections and lusts. So there are several different types of death that are spoken of in the Bible, but I'm really only talking about these two today. The Bible speaks frequently of physical death, obviously. This is something that happens to every one of us. Like Jesus talked about with Lazarus, sometimes it's called sleeping, as, if, as in taking a dirt nap in the grave. It says in John 11 and verse 11, These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. The disciples think he's talking about taking a nap. Verse 12, Then said the disciples, Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought, that he had spoken of taking of rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. So this is physical death here, obviously, and it's referred to as sleeping. Now this will come in handy in some other biblical passage when it first refers to people who are sleeping, and it's talking about physical death. Physical death can be a result of sin. The Corinthians had really made a mockery of the Lord's Supper, and they had turned it into a potluck, and they were drunken and and being a bunch of gluttons. And Paul says, for this reason, the Lord had actually killed some of those people and some of them were sick. He says in 1 Corinthians 11, verses 29 and 30, For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. He's talking about that sleep that Lazarus was taking, the sleep of death. Some people the Lord had actually put to death for abusing the Lord's Supper. I'm going to be careful about that one. When Ananias and Sapphira sold their land and gave the price to the apostles, they gave the money to the apostles, they pretended to give it all, but held back some of it for themselves. And they lied to Peter, but ultimately they lied to God. They lied to the Holy Ghost. And they experienced this, this physical death as a result of that sin. Acts 5, verses 4 through 5. Peter says, Whiles it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear fell on all them that heard these things. He gave up the ghost. The body without the spirit is dead. Ananias physically died. Now this physical death is only temporary. It's actually only temporary for the elect and for the non-elect as well. 
it's temporary in a good way for the elect, because we will be resurrected to life. To the non-elect, to the reprobate, they will be resurrected to damnation. But either way, physical death is only temporary. We're told in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16-17, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. That's the physically dead that have gone on and have died. And Paul says they are sleeping in Jesus earlier there in 1 Thessalonians 4. Verse 17, then, which we, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So, just to recap, there's a spiritual death that came about because of Adam's sin, and he passed that spiritual that de that spiritual death nature down to all of his descendants. We are by nature the children of wrath, even as others, as it tells us in Ephesians two three. There's that spiritual death, and in that spiritual death, we can't hear or believe or understand the gospel. We can't do good things or seek God, and I've covered that in other videos. But then there's also a physical death where every one of us will experience, and that is also a result of sin because we're told the wages of sin is death and remember if you're born once you're going to die twice you're going to die physically and spiritually in the lake of fire but if you're born twice if you're born again you will only ever die once thanks for listening and i'll talk to you again next week lord willing